He is a mighty God. He is in control of your business. He is in charge of your destiny and future. How many are following? Now, I can see your hands. Can I see your hands properly? I want to see your hands. Jesus. What dimension are you? What dimension are you? Say yes. Some people just say, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That name, in the name of Jesus. It doesn't work in the third dimension. <laughs> it doesn't work in the name of Jesus in the natural. All the whole Bible here is teaching up dimensions. Move out of the flesh. Move out of this. Move out of this. Move out of this. Move out of this. Now, look at that. Romans chapter 8. All right? We read verse 5, 7. Now, check verse 8. Romans 8, verse 8. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Just the fact you are in the third dimension, you, you will never please him. No matter how you do it, oh, I'm giving. If you are giving in the flesh, you are not even pleasing. He is not even interested in your giving. I am fasting. No matter how you fast, if you're in the flesh, he's not even pleased. Now, so watch this. So, so, when you, how do you get out of the flesh? I've told you, it's your mindset. Be on the truth, not on a lie. Your mindset. Your mindset. Know you have grace. And your words will become reality. Now, that's the fifth dimension. Then we went to the sixth dimension. This is the most difficult dimension for people. It is a dimension of love. We have a problem here. We have people speaking in tongues, but they have no love. We have people preaching, but no love. We have people in fasting. Right in their fasting, there is no love. That's why it is a dimension on its own. Let me say something to you. You know, the moment you get into the dimension of love, where now you begin to look at things from the point of love. If there any human being in this world who exists, who think I hate them. Wow. Those human beings, they are, they are aliens. They don't exist. <laughs> Do you know why? I just love people. I love just people. I just love. It's so simple for me to love people. It is a dimension. Listen to me. I saw one of my sons came to me and said, Papa, I need anointing. I need, Papa, I need anointing. When I pray for people, I need to see people being healed. I said, that's not anointing. I said, why? He said, I, I want my branch to grow. I want when healings I said, that's not anointing. I said, that, those are charms. Listen, if you, need, if you need it just to grow your church, that's not anointing. We don't heal people because we want to grow our churches. Have I healed anyone here? Since I've been, just been teaching here. Did we heal any person today? We don't heal people to grow the church. We heal people because we love. That is love being made manifest. You have no idea when I look at a person like this on the wheelchair, what comes in my spirit. I begin to feel for that person. 
And I have this love. And the gift flows through love. It is love that makes me go on top of the mountain when all of you are sleeping. In prayer, Father, I'm praying. Touch them, touch, deliver them, deliver them. When I come here, it just manifests. There is love behind. It is not a fashion. There is love behind. You should ask my wife, what time does the prophet sleep? She will tell you, there is love behind. And I want you to hear this. There is love behind. It is love. It is a dimension. Now, when you get into the dimension of love, it is in this dimension where you begin now to learn how to love God and also you begin to learn how to use the love of God over your life. Because so many people, they know the scripture which says, for God so loved the world. And I explained to you about the widdith, the breedith, the length, and the height. It is a mystery of the cross. It says, and to know what is in your widdith, what is in your height, what is in your breedith, what is in your depth. The love of Christ that surpasses all knowledge. It is when you get into this dimension of love. It is where you now, whatever you do, or things that you do around you, surpasses knowledge. Trust you me, if somebody wronged you, and they spoke so many things, and attacked you, and fought you, posted you on social media, that you are fake, you are evil. After posting and writing and speaking about you and speaking about you, the following day you are with them. It is surpassing knowledge. Because according to knowledge, that person is your enemy. You must hate them. They must not come near you. They are evil. They are wrong. It is love. It surpasses all knowledge. Your own mom, some of you can't even speak to your mothers. And you're expecting God of major one. You are joking. You see, it is love that over, there is no weapon in this world greater than this dimension. And most believers don't even know. Any person who wrongs you, forgive them. Love them. Show them love. Just show them love. Just do it. And you will see. And it is the most difficult dimension to live. You know, when you operate in the dimension of love. Now, in Exodus chapter 20, we have, from verse 1 to 17, we have the Ten Commandments. Do we? We have the Ten Commandments. How many? Ten. In the New Testament, they changed. They are, no longer ten. they are no longer Ten Commandments in the New Testament. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to hear me very well. There are only two commandments. In the New Testament. Now I'm going to show you just now. And, and I want you to see something here. Are you following? Yes. How many commandments? And so when I wonder when people are still talking about all oh, the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments in the Bible. Hey, we are no longer having Ten Commandments in the New Testament. There are only two commandments. Now what are these commandments? Let me just show you quickly. Now in the book of John. Um, um, in the book of, before we go to the book of John, okay? Let me go to uh, Second John, chapter 1, verse 16. All right? Second John, 1, verse 16. Second John, 1, verse 16. Now, and go to the book of Romans, 13. Verse 8 to 10. It says what? Give me NIV quickly. First John 1 verse 6. All right. And Romans 13 verse 8 to 10. All right, what does the Bible say? 
if we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not leave out the truth. Did you hear that? Now, now, give me King James Version. Now, if we say that we have fellowship with, with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. I want you to see this, hear this statement. If we claim that we are saved and still walk in the third dimension, we are lying. Let me simplify for you. We are lying. Now, let me go to another scripture. Let's go to uh, uh, the book of Romans. Now, the book of Romans, the Bible says, in the book of Romans 13, verse 8 to 10. Now, the Bible says, in NIV, I want you to see in NIV, okay? Let no depth remain outstanding, except the continuing depth to love one another. Okay? For who's, whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. Wait a minute. What, what law? So we have got only ten commandments as the law. But the Bible says whosoever loves has fulfilled all the ten commandments. Has fulfilled all the law. Are, are you following that? Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. I, I want to show you verse, verse 9. Now, go to verse 9. All right? The commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not convert. And whatever other commandment there may be are summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Are you seeing now? So in the New Testament, we have got only two commandments. Now I'm going to show you here. Now let's continue reading. Now go verse 10. Now verse 10, the Bible says, Love does not harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. So when we read other scriptures, where people say, oh, the Bible says this. The Bible says, oh, thou shall you not do this. Thou shall you not do this. One commandment here is killing all other commandments. But now check this in the book of Mark chapter 12, verse 30 to 31. Okay? Uh, uh, Mark, uh, uh, Mark, Mark 12, verse 30 to 31. What does the Bible say? Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Love God. 31. The second is now give me go back to verse 30. Go back to verse 30 and give me King James Version. Now it says what? And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. We have got how many in the, in the Old Testament? Ten. Ten. In the New Testament, what first commandment? Love God with all your heart, all your soul. And all your strength. Now, second commandment, second scripture. And the second is like, namely this Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than this. So, of two commandments love God and love your neighbor. Period. Forget about all this, all this. All people who does covet, who can murder, it's because they have got no love. They don't love God and they don't love their neighbor. So now, now, I'm about to show another scripture here that is very important on a dimension now, at a dimensional level. Are, are you following this? Now let's go to 1 John 4, verse 7 to 8. Now, the Bible says what? Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loves is born of God and knows God. Verse 8. 
He that loves not knoweth not God, for God is love. So what do we mean when we say love is dimension? Did you hear that God himself is love? Did you hear that? So if you want to start seeing the love of God, you need to operate from the seventh from the sixth dimension. On the sixth dimension, are you ready for this one? It is when people say, I am seeing the love of God. You see, people speak about the love of God, the love of God. You cannot operate on this dimension and remain the same. Do you know why? In 1 Corinthians 13, from verse 4 to 7, watch this. Watch this. Now give me uh, 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 NIV. It says what? Love is patient. Any person who's like, oh, I've been praying, I can have patience, they are, they are just not in this dimension. If you operate in this dimension, you are very patient. Look at Abraham. He was very patient. Look at Isaac. He was very patient. Already, it's six months now. When you operate in the dimension of love, you are patient. Love is patient. Now, continue there. It says, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. Verse 5. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. We are going to what I'm now looking for. It always protects. Anyone who operates in the dimension of love, they have so much protection. It always what? Protects. Always trusts. Always hopes. Have you, have you understood that, that statement? Always perseveres. Are you understanding this statement? It always trusts. Always hopes. Not, ah, Papa, I've lost hope now. You are just not in the dimension. The sixth dimension, we don't lose hope. The sixth dimension, we don't lose trust. We keep on believing. We keep on having faith. So the reason why you keep on struggling in faith and that is because your dimension is the third dimension. Can you imagine the distance between the third and the sixth? No wonder you are not having faith. You can't trust. There is no hope. Go. Let's, go. Let's just borrow verse 8. It says, love never fails. You didn't hear that. It is a higher dimension more than prophecies. It is a higher dimension more than healing. Now let's read it. Love, the sixth dimension never fails. Whether there are prophecies, they will cease. Whether there are tongues, they will be stilled. Whether there is knowledge, it will pass away. But love, Never fails. Are you hearing that? Now verse 9. It says what? For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But love. Love never fails. Why people are saying, oh, I've been praying this. Oh, whatever I try to do, it doesn't work. I apply here. They can't pick me. I do this. They can't get me. I do this. This can't happen. This is not working in my life. You are operating in the third dimension. When you get into the dimension of love, love never fell. It says God is love. So this love, there are two types of this dimension's love. Loving people and loving God. This type of loving God, the Bible says you love him with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. If I may ask you what is your strength, I may, I may, I may, I may tell you what is my strength. What, what is your strength? Now, some people may be like, my strength is my business. 
Some people may say, my strength is my, uh, uh, my job, my salary. My what? Loving God is loving him with your strength. Loving God with all your strength, with all your soul, and with all your what? All your might. Are you following somebody? No, 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 no. no. The way you're answering now, it looks like uh, you are tired now. We haven't even gone to seven. Are you ready for seventh? Are you ready for the seventh? Yes. Let's go to verse 13. Same chapter. Verse 13. And now, these three remain. Only three things. Faith. Hope. And love. Faith. What dimension? Fourth dimension. Hope. And love. Are, are, are you following? Yeah. How many? Hope, faith, and love. What does love do? It always hopes. Faith, love. When you see us fasting, I, I don't fast because I'm looking for God to protect me to do. I, I fast because I love God. I, I pray because I love God. I don't wait for the enemy to, oh, I'm fasting now because there's a problem. No. I love God. When I give, it is because I love God. It is a dimension you can operate also. You can choose to operate in this one. You, you fast not because you have a problem, but just because you love God. 